Hello everyone and welcome to part 19 in this series of creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In previous videos, we created our very own secure API for our vehicles application. But like all development, we need to test our work. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the automated test framework and in particular, have a look at a couple of steps that are available in the platform to test incoming REST connections. But we'll also take a quick look at Postman as well, because that will allow us to test our OAuth authentication too. Okay, so to create an automated test in ServiceNow, you can't actually do it in ServiceNow Studio. If you come to creating an application file here, there's no option here to create a test. So we'll need to go back to the regular platform user interface, go to our automated test framework application and create a new test there. We'll give it a name, get vehicle, we will enable parameterized testing. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a moment and we'll give it a description as well. We just wanna test a, a particular resource, that, uh, the get resource that we were looking at earlier and we'll go ahead and save that. All right, so for this parameterized test, we're actually going to create some parameters and then we can test those parameters in different test runs. So we'll go ahead and add some parameters here. So the first one here I'm going to add is just the VIN, the vehicle identification number. We'll make that a string and submit that. And then we'll go ahead and add another one, this time for the version, so our version API that is. And that will be a maximum length of three. And then we'll come over to our test run data sets and we'll just create some data sets using those parameters. So the first one here, I'm going to use the vehicle identification number from this Subaru here. So I'll just copy that and put that in. And this version will be version three. So that's the first API resource version that we'll test. Okay, so we'll save that too. All right, now it's time to create our test steps. So let's go ahead and create our first one. I'll just type in REST here. There are a lot of steps, as you probably are already aware if you've looked at the automated test framework before. And uh, we can see here we've got uh, a few for REST. So we'll select REST request inbound and click on next. We'll need to authenticate here. So I'll actually go ahead and create a new record using the same vehicle integration user that we've been using up until this point. Okay, so just remember this is basic authentication. So I'll save that. We'll test a get method and the path. I'll just get from our version three get resource here. So that resource path, I'll just copy that and put that in the path. I'm gonna replace a couple of values here. So the first one will be the version number here. So I'm gonna replace that with one of our parameters version. And the second value I will change here will be the VIN and I'll put our second parameter in there for VIN, okay? Okay, so we'll need some headers. So I'm gonna specify the standard content type as application JSON, because if you recall, our API will only accept JSON, or only respond in JSON rather, and I'll put another header there for accept likewise. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that. So that's our request. So let's go ahead and add another test step. So we can see here, we've actually got quite a library of possible tests that we can run here. So I'm gonna add the assert status code here. So we're basically going to check, okay, what response, what status code do we get back from the server? So we should get back in this case a 200. Let's save that, let's add another test step. This time we're going to just verify that the JSON payload is valid. So that will actually confirm that what we've scripted as part of that resource, what we're outputting back in the response is valid. And then we'll come back and we'll just add one more test step. And for this step, we will just check the payload that we get back in the response, okay? So for this, uh, it's going to contain our Subaru Impreza, okay? So this is just a standard name value pair. So I'm just gonna pop that into the response body like so, all right? So far, so good. All right, let's go ahead and save that and we'll go ahead and test it. And it fails. Hmm. 
Do you know why it failed? For those of you who have just watched this video without watching the previous videos, this may come as a surprise to you. But for those of you who watched the preceding videos in this series, just think about what we did there. What's causing this test to fail? Well, if we have a look at the test result here, we can actually see that the test failed because we expected a response of 200, but we actually got a 401, okay, which basically means an authentication error. And if you recall in previous videos, we actually not only enabled the authentication using OAuth, but we enforced it. And our test was using basic authentication. Okay, so this is why it's failing. So what we could do now is actually just go ahead and change the test and say, for this test to pass, we actually expect a 401. That's actually a good thing. So let's go back to our test here and we'll go to our test steps and we'll just delete the last two steps there because we actually don't want to validate any JSON or check the contents there, although we could check for a particular error message. But what we'll do, we'll go ahead and delete those first. And then we'll go ahead and just change the status code for our test step from 200 to 401. All right, we'll save that. Run it again. Hooray, it passes. Great. We have a look at the test results here. We can see that we expected a 401 and that's exactly what we got. So if you recall in part 17 of this series, we actually enabled API access policies and specifically, we enforce the authentication using OAuth. But we can see here, we only did that for version 3. Okay, and if we actually go into the authentication profile here, we can see the type is set to OAuth, which means that we're only accepting OAuth authentication requests. All right. So what we could do now is test this again for version 2 using basic auth instead. Okay, now in the previous video, we actually disabled version two and version one as well. So just for this demonstration, we'll actually go ahead back to our versioning here for our API and re-enable version two there. And then we'll go ahead and save it. Now what we could do here is add an extra parameter to account for the resource code and then change the value of that code depending on the other variables that we're using in that test. So we'll go ahead to parameter definitions, and we'll create a new one. This time it will be an integer. We'll give this a name response code and save that. And then we'll come down to our test run data sets. We'll modify the existing one. Okay, so for that version three, we'll change the, or we'll add the response code. And we actually expect a, a 401 there. And we'll save that. And then we'll create a new test data set here. Okay, we'll use the same VIN in this case. Go to new. So we'll pop that VIN in there. This time the version will be version two. And the response that we should get back because we're still accepting basic authentication requests there will be 200. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that. So now that we have our new parameters, we can go ahead to our test steps here and just modify those. Okay, so in this case, we've already got the version in there in the, the path and the VIN. We'll go to the next test step where we get the response code. So at the moment, we've hard coded a 401 response code. So we'll just go ahead and replace that with our parameter that we just added and save that. Okay, so now when we're running the test for version three, we should get a 401. And for version two, we should get a 200. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And there we have it. Everything's passed and it's passing as it should, as we expect. And again here, just to confirm for version three, we get a 401. For version two, we're getting a 200. So as you can see with the automated test framework, we can easily test our API and we can also create parameters for our different tests. What we can't do, however, is authenticate or test authentication using something other than basic auth. Okay, so what could we do? What tool could we use to test OAuth, to test API access policies, to test authentication scopes? Postman, do I hear you say? Absolutely. Let's take a look. So in Postman, I now have built up an entire collection of requests for different resources, for different versions of our API. 
and using different authentication methods. So if we come to the version three using OAuth for get vehicle, let's open that up. And you can see here, there is a test tab right there. So in Postman, you can actually go ahead here and create your tests using JavaScript. So we won't go into the detail of actually how to create tests here, but our life is made a whole lot easier by the fact that there is a collection of snippets that we can use to build up our test. Okay. If you want to learn more about creating tests in Postman, just check out YouTube. There's a link in the description below to an official video from Postman about testing. But for our purposes, we're going to keep this simple. So the first thing we'll test is whether we get a response of 200. So there's one test snippet right here. I can just click on it and it will pop in there. Okay. Uh, the other thing we can test is whether we get a certain response back in the body. So for this test, I'm actually going to test to see if we get uh, a make is Volvo because that actually corresponds to the VIN that I'm going to use to test this request with. Uh, but here, as you can see, we'll just need to escape these quotation marks so we don't get any errors there. And what I do also is just remove that little space there because I think that may cause a problem. So I'll just take that out, escape the other quotation marks, and I think we'll be fine with that. Another thing that we can test here as well that we can't test in the automated test framework is the response time. Okay, so the total response time, you know, from server to server. And so here we can just select the response time is less than 200 milliseconds. And maybe just to be a little bit more conservative, we can change that to 2000. But before we actually run the test and click on send here, uh, just notice in Postman in the, the get, in the path there, the endpoint that the VIN variable there is highlighted in red, which actually means it's not resolved yet. And that's because no environment has been set that includes that VIN. So you'll need to come up and just be conscious of what environment is currently selected because your variables will be pulled from there. I'll change it to vehicles demo and that should work just fine now. So if we go ahead and click on send, we get our response back. Hmm, but notice the test results, two out of three. That means two out of three have passed. One has failed. Which one? We get the status code 200, the, mod the body matches the string, but our response time was, um, however, longer than 2000 milliseconds. Okay, what should we do about that? Well, for this little demonstration, we'll just increase the maximum response time that is allowed to 3000. Let's see if that works. Send that once more and voila, okay, it's now there. What we should actually do is just change the, the comment of the test itself. So at the moment, it still says response time is less than 200 milliseconds. We should just update that to 3000 as well. And similar to what we did in the automated test framework, let's test another resource, uh, this time using basic authentication, but in version three, not in version two. The basic authentication in version three should not be permissible. So let's go ahead and open that one up. We'll come to our test there and we'll select that status code is 200. We'll just need to change that and update that to 401 in both the comment as well as the actual value that we are evaluating. Okay, the environment is okay still. So let's send that off. We get a user not authenticated response back, which is what we expect. And if we have a look at our test results, that passes as well. Okay, so now we've got two tests tied to our two different requests there. So uh, I'll save those. And what you can also do in Postman, similar to what you can do in the automated test framework is build up test suites and then schedule them to run uh, whatever you like. You can actually run tests based on an entire collection or actually an individual folder or subfolder. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll actually run this for our version three folder here. And we'll only select uh, the, the two get vehicle resource Request there, both using basic auth and OAuth. So the two tests that we just executed. And then you can come over here and you can schedule those just like you can uh, with testing in ServiceNow or you can run them manually. So let me just run it manually. And you can see here that both of those tests pass. So now we have two fantastic tools for our testing efforts, both inside ServiceNow as well as using Postman. 
So in the next and penultimate video in this video series, we're going to take a quick look at reports and statistics for our APIs.